Hello, thank you for joining me again today. I'm going to be working on another of these small canvas panels, which are 8 inches square. And this is primed with gesso, so it's nice and ready to go. And I'm going to be using some new inks that I've just bought, a beautiful raw, um, transparent raw sienna and a lovely sap green. These are the Liquitex ones. And I'm going to add some yellow and a little bit of pink. And instead of the plain white, I'm actually going to use some pearlescent white on this piece, just to give it a little bit of a so we're ready to go and first thing I'm going to do is just using the flat brush wet the top sort of third of this canvas because I'm going to do it slightly different than the abstracts I've done before. Uh, in those I've used a pen to draw first but this one I'm going to do a little bit more loosely. So I'm going in with the beautiful transparent raw sienna just dropping it with the pipette into that wet area that we've got and I'm going to do some tilting to get it to move down that square. It's such a beautiful colour, it's like a golden yellow, it really is gorgeous. And those of you who've watched before know that I have a particular love for burnt sienna but this is nice to use something a little different. So now it's sort of run a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more. It's spread out into a beautiful yellow and I just want to darken some of the top parts. So I'm adding a little bit more just to get that going. Help it move with the wet brush if you want to. I find that putting a little empty pudding pot underneath the board helps it to tilt and you don't have to keep hold of it to keep tilting it. Uh, you can be free to do your own thing. So now I'm going to add some of that gorgeous sap green into the mixture and just let that do the same thing. I want a little bit more of an angle so I'm just going to twist that about and get a little bit of movement and a little bit of flow going there with the two colours. And as you can see, it's really run down very nicely. So I've put a slightly taller pot behind it. Uh, it's still very wet. You can see it's puddling at the bottom. And now I'm going to go in with this pure yellow just to add a little bit of a spark in here. Again, these are all the acrylic inks. And these are all Liquitex at the moment. And then I'm using my plastic card just to scrape a few little shapes into the wet, to the wet inks, which will actually create little dimples in the canvas. So you can start to make little forms of stems and things like that, even at this stage, pulling the ink into different places, spreading it around a little bit. There we go, it's running nicely down that page. So what we'll end up with is a lot of dense colour at what will be the bottom and then spreading lightly towards the top because we're working sort of upside down at the moment. And now that this is slightly dry, I'm going to go in and scrape out some of the colour so we've got some white marks showing through here. This is just the corner of an old supermarket card and it's great. If you pick up some paint, just use a, a tissue to wipe the card clean and you can be as random as you want. Just add in lots of variety, little bits of twiddles. Some of these can be covered later so don't worry too much about going wrong. And here you can see we've got some lovely marks made in that now. And the colours have merged together really well. So now I'm going to use the card to add a little bit of this pearlescent white in different places. Again, it's just going to create a little bit of interesting texture, depending how thickly you apply it. And you just pull it along. You can do it horizontally, you can do it vertically. Make sure you've got enough. I use an old plastic well, it was actually a cat treat lid, but it's great. It's just the right size for doing this sort of thing. So now I'm just going to brush a little bit down, just soften that paint that I've put on there and just use the soft flat brush to spread it where you want to. Don't worry too much about covering up the background. We can always add more in. That's the beauty of acrylics. Once these have dried, they're not going to move again. So very useful. And now I'm using my small uh, catalyst spatula just to smooth things down. The brush is great, but it can make a little bit of a mark in there. So the catalyst works very nice. And you can also scrape into the paint as well with the catalyst. It's not as sharp as the plastic card, so you end up with a lot more organic shapes. And you can lift and pull and move the colour about where you want to. Okay, so now... Everything is, is drying, but I want to add a little more depth in. So I'm going back in with the sap green and just making little sort of leaf shapes or stem shapes using the pipette. 
Uh, it contains quite a lot of ink, which is great. You can do some quite interesting shapes before it even needs refilling. So just have a bit of a play about and just create some loose organic shapes in there. Now I'm going to add a little bit more of that lovely transparent raw sienna in. That lovely gold colour, it really is pretty. And again, just dotting it around and then giving it a spritz and letting it just run and bleed into each other and make lots of interesting shapes there. I haven't tilted it, I'm instead pushing it along with the catalyst tool. So again, we can spread that into some of the pearlescent paint, we can make interesting shapes. Whatever you feel. This is abstract by the way, so it's what you want to, to create in this picture. And now I'm going in with a little bit of the raw sienna just at the top and dotted throughout. This is just the process of adding colours where you feel you'd like them. And now the background is completely dry. I'm going to go in now with the pink colour that I have. This is a pearlescent acrylic ink. This is a Dela Rowney. And I'm just putting in little dots of pink. It's actually supposed to be a red colour, but it is much more pink with the pearlescence. Very pretty though. So I'm going to make some little meadow type flowers. Nothing specific, just adding in little dots. And once I've popped those in, I'm going to use the brush just to spread them around a little bit, give them different shapes, uh, some small, some broader, just vary them to give them that look of a, a flower. And I'm actually going in with a little tiny bit of actual red, not pearlescent, just the red acrylic ink, just at the base of some of those pink parts, just to give a little depth. And it just adds to the whole thing. And now I'm popping in some white acrylic inks. And they're all running together, which is lovely. And I'm using the edge of the card just to pull out little shapes, almost like little lavender flowers, little spikes of flowers, just for that little bit of interest. No flowers are just sort of little balls of, of flower. They, they have little twiddly bits and they have little buds that are open, flowers that are open. Whatever you feel. Using the edge of your, your card, you can pull them out into lovely shapes. Now I'm going to use my fine rigger or liner brush with the sap green and start in to add in some beautiful little loose stems. And again, it's just a question of pulling it down into the base. You can pull it through. Don't forget that the flowers need a little bit of green further up to connect them as well. And just little bits of twiddly leaves or whatever. This is really useful, using a cotton wool bud um, just to spread some of the colour out because you can soften the colours, you can make them into different shapes. If you get cotton wool buds that have two different ends, you get quite a useful tool to make different shapes with. So it, it also helps to remove colour as well if it's a little bit intense in places. So if it's gone a little bit too runny, you can actually just remove some of that ink. And this is looking really pretty. I'm quite pleased with this. So I want a little bit more depth. So the sap green just dotted into a few little places just to highlight the green in some areas. Because it's ink and it's fluid, it does sort of dry out into the wet. And again, I'm going to use the cotton wool bud to pull that into some shapes to make some pretty little leaf areas. Just dotting it in. Maybe remove that little bit. It's a bit heavy there. It's so easy to take it out because it's ink. It's, it's really versatile. And again, I'm just going to add into this top corner some of the yellow. I want to make a very roughly abstract sort of shape. And to balance that, I will dot some into the flowers as well, just to add little tiny bits of yellow flowers in amongst the pink. Using some of that lovely pearlescent white, I'm then going to go in and mix that with that yellow acrylic ink. The two, because they're both acrylics, will work really well together. It softens down the yellow and makes it a little bit thicker uh, with the pearlescent in it as well. So that's going to make a really pretty area at that top corner. You could almost think it was a bit like a sunshine colour. If you were thinking it was a meadow, that might be appropriate. And 
And now with that cotton wool bud, I'm going to bob some of that lovely pearlescent white into our field, into the flowers, into just a few little bits of areas just to highlight. Because it's pearlescent, it picks up the shine, so when light hits it, you will see the little bits of white, even if it looks quite indistinct the rest of the time. Now, those of you who know me know I love to have a little bit of bling in, so I bought myself a new paint, the gold paint, which is the um, Regency Gold Rogerson Liquid Metal Acrylics. It's just beautiful. So I'm going to just take some of this colour onto my palette knife and just start to add in some sort of corn type stems just to add that contrast with the green just dotting it into various little areas making stems pulling it out a little bit it's got a lovely shimmer to it it really is beautiful just adding like little ears of corn or seed heads whatever you think belongs in this sort of painting And I'm just going to add a little bit under that sunshine area that we put up. Um, just to highlight that little square, pull some of that lovely gold down. And just give it a little bit of structure within the looseness of this painting. And you see I've added a few little lines just by using the edge of the palette knife. And now using that rigger brush, I'm going to neaten those edges. And just make sure that the colour is exactly where I want and add a little bit of the gold into the flowers as well, why not? It carries it on up into that corner there. Works really beautifully. And it also gives a little bit of contrast to the pinks and the whites. Makes them really pop, really stand out. And here we have the final piece. It's, as you can see, put into its mount, its frame, it's open at the front, it's not behind glass, and that's the beauty of acrylics, it's not going to um, fade like it would with a watercolour. And you can see the different little bits of grasses, the little bits that make the interest in this picture. And I hope that you've really enjoyed getting some different ideas with this one, and I will see you again next time.